The U.S. border, one of President Trump's favorite topics. In Maine, there's no plan to build a big wall to keep the Canadians out yet, and that's a good thing for people in a place called Escort Station. There aren't many of them, but folks who live in New England's northernmost community have been subject to the quirks of having a border down the middle of their street or through the middle of their house. If you thought understanding French was the toughest part of visiting Quebec, try only being able to go grocery shopping weekdays and only when customs is open. What's that life like? Allons-y. And remember to set your dash for kilometers per hour. I'm Dustin. That's Rachel. She's Julia. Three occasionally clueless 20-somethings who work at a TV station. We are a reporter, producer, and photographer who got the chance to explore Maine, meet the people succeeding, the people struggling, and find out just what is there to do and see in a state almost as quirky as we are. In other words, we saw Maine by the mile. Escort Station and Poenigamook, yep, that's really how you say the name, Poenigamook, are a six-hour haul from Portland, an eight-hour trek from Boston. The easiest way to get there is to drive north through Maine to the Aroostook County town of Fort Kent. There actually is a fort there, and you can stop at the Moose Shack restaurant for some genuine poutine, or poutine for the non-natives. I didn't want to come this far north and didn't have poutine. Another satisfied customer. The easiest way to get to escort from here is to cross the border into Claire, New Brunswick and continue on to Quebec and Poenigamook. The Quebecers told us a language barrier deters more Mainers from visiting since they speak almost exclusively French and many Mainers don't. This proved to be the case when I had to pull out my less than stellar high school French to figure out if the rooms I'd reserved for us at the Auberge Villa des Frontières was actually waiting for us. Uh, can we put two people into one of the rooms? We. Oui. It all works out. You just muscle through or download a language app. You'll look silly, but hey, it's trial and error. We are on level one, beginner. I don't know a lick of French. Which of these is the boy? La fille? La femme? Les garçons? Garçon. garçon. Or la pomme, which garçon. I'm pretty sure means garçon. apple. The Auberge Villa des Frontières roughly translates to Inn by the Border. The hotel has a full restaurant with good hearty breakfasts and a bar that's open much later than any similar establishment you'll find in Maine. The accommodations are fairly standard, though the lakefront rooms have solid views. To be honest, we didn't spend that much time a la auberge because we were busy driving and running around. The inn is as close as you can stay to Escort Station. You just cross under the railroad bridge and in five minutes you're somewhere between Puenigamook and Escort. Literally. Talk about coming in the United States and border crossings, and here we're just dancing right, right into the country. So now we're in Canada still, and we're going to see who we can find here. One person we found was this pirate who invited us into her backyard to see this strange geography up close. Set uh, down. Il est au Canada ou États-Unis? Ici. Okay. Ça, c'est Maine. Maine. Canada. As this woman, who we're pretty sure is named Cecile, explained, half her flowers are in America. The other half and most of her house are in Canada. She pays taxes in both countries because no one in life cuts you a break. She pays her taxes in Augusta, just like every other Maine. Petit, small, tax. Just a little bit. And how's... All along this street called Rue de la Frontière, you can see the obelisks marking the point where the two countries meet. Technically, you're supposed to check in with the customs office down the street from the park if you're coming and going. But that's not really practical for a quick exploration, which meant we had the odd experience of touring around with no border officers breathing down our necks. At the end of Rue de la Frontière, there's a little park that's part of Maine and Quebec, with a small footbridge spanning the two countries. There are also a pair of homes solidly at the main end of the street, one of which had just been sold for less than 50 grand. The buyer was this guy, Steve Stallman, fresh off the four-wheel drive truck from Kentucky. Do you feel like a Mainer? Do you feel like a Canadian? Do you feel like somebody else? I feel like a Mainer, for sure. In fact, I, I came up here to visit. I thought, okay, let me, let me spend the, the summer up here. I was here two weeks, and I said, you know, sh shoot. <laughs> I'm going down to, uh, you know, change my driver's license. Uh, you know, I, uh, this is my permanent home now. And you might be the northernmost Mainer 
Yet you sound nothing like a Mainer and don't speak any French. Well, I don't sound like I'm from Massachusetts either, and I don't, you know, or Kentucky probably, but uh, I'm working on all three of those. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, are we allowed to go down that way, or can't we? You're Americans, sure. Yeah. And you've already checked in up here. Uh, let's see. See this. If I go out, I have to check in with Canada going out. Uh, when I come back in, I don't have to talk to them again at all if I don't want to, but I have to check in with the Americans. If you guys checked in with, come on up. I forget. <laughs> Just blissful that. ignorance. Yeah, exactly right. <laughs> Plus, well, if we get in trouble, it'll be great for the show. I was going to get the truck out of the way. I just thought that's okay. I couldn't tell well, this you guys is cool were. because we can see your plates now. Yeah. Yep, I'm a proud Mainer. <laughs> Congrats, Mainer. Thank you. Steve was still unpacking and decorating when he gave us the tour of his property. He explained he had all kinds of plans for different things he wanted to do with the yard. He even mentioned an idea to open some kind of border restaurant that would straddle the U.S. and Canada. But as neat as it is to live like Steve on the frontier, it's a complicated existence for sure. The nearest main town is an hour-long drive through dense woods on logging roads, which means anyone who lives in Escort has to depend on the Canadians a lot. So real quick, let's just do this for fun, like a lightning round. You can just say either Maine or Canada. Okay. All right. Okay. Electric. Canada. Cell phones. Uh, Canada and U.S. Groceries. Canada and U.S. Money. Canada and U.S. Uh, Medical. Uh, U.S. And what was Insurance. It? Uh, U.S. Car. U.S. Do you have Wi-Fi? Uh, not Wi-Fi. I've got DSL. So I've got an internet service, yeah. And that's American? Or uh, Canadian. Bell Canada, yeah. Garbage removal. Canada. Thank you, Canada. And recycling. They do that. They actually come down into the USA for a second and the machine, you know, tilts it. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Maybe now you won't complain about your utility bills anymore. A jammed spreadsheet with tiny font is a minor problem compared to bills in another language assessed in a foreign currency. And wait... As if there aren't enough layers of complicated on this cake, Steve can only get groceries or anything else he needs in Canada on certain days of the week at certain times. I can't leave here. I can't go into Canada during the weekends. Um, I mean, nobody can unless they have a special permit. They close the border crossing here at 445 on weekdays, and it's not open during weekends at all, either, either one. Um, there are these uh, cards that you can apply for at, uh, on the Canadian side and the American side that would allow for after hours access and I've put in for those but I haven't gotten those yet. Um, and I'm working on that right now. So how do you structure your day so you're back here by that time so you don't get arrested or anything? Uh, any medical appoint appointments or anything like that? Anything I have to do that's out of town, I have to time it so that I can um, be where I'm going, uh, you know, do whatever I have to do there within uh, probably two hours. It was easy to see why Steve really enjoyed his time on the Canadian side. Poenigamook has a cool microbrewery, a public beach, nice views of the lake, and all kinds of winter and spring activities. By the time we'd driven all the way there, all we could think about doing was relaxing. As luck would have it, there was a Nordic spa in town, which was pretty trendy of us to go visit. Am I right? What is with the whole Nordic spa thing around here? Because we passed a couple other signs on our way up towards the river advertising for stuff like this. Does Quebec want to be Scandinavia? Is it having an identity crisis? No, actually, I think it's because of, uh, it's a trend that is picking up. It's picking pace a lot. In Europe, they're all over the place, right? And then you can have something like this in your backyard. Not going to Europe and, and spending a lot of money, you can still come here and have the same kind of treatment that you would uh, over there. Patrick Bart is the guy to see if you're ready to sweat in a sauna instead of the driver's seat. So this is not a hobbit hole? Nope, not at all. This is what we call a sauna. So it's uh, basically a hot room where you can pour some, a little bit of water on the rocks to, uh, to uh, pump up a little bit the, uh, the water vapor in there and have a really good heat going on so you can accumulate that heat. Personally, I'm not really one for extreme heat or cold for that matter. But in the spirit of taking one for the viewers, I volunteered to sample a rooftop massage. Have anything with the legs, or the arms, the forearms, the, uh, the hands, maybe? I don't know what. I, I'm just, hmm. I mean, I don't, whatever you usually do. It's all adapted to the customer. It is? <laughs> yes. Oh. That's oh. what we do. See, I don't know but, enough about massages to really okay. say exactly. Where does it hurt? Where does it hurt? Yeah. 
If I ever get like tense, it's all it's back here. Okay. Here and up here. Yeah. Yeah. So good. Yeah. My arms and legs are usually fine. Yeah. So. Okay. Skin so foul. You want it strong or soft? I feel like for this show we gotta go all the, we gotta go strong. Okay. It should well hurt you <laughs> if you wanted to, <laughs> but that's fine. Yes, that's uh, have what found out. This is oh. While I will apologize for subjecting you to these shots of my back, I refuse to apologize for getting a massage. This was my first one, and it certainly won't be the last, even though I don't really do relaxation all that well. Should Americans be worried about coming here even if they don't speak French? Not at all. We, we do have a lot of people that, that do have some kind of knowledge about English lang language, but usually people, you know, they get around and they can uh, be well serviced anyway if they don't have that, that uh, French going on for them. Our experience in Poenigamuk and Escort was unique and fun, even though we didn't have French going on for us. The Quebecois bikers we met were warm and welcoming, as was Steve, New England's northernmost resident. Should you go to Escort, embrace the quirks. It's the kind of place to go if you've ever wanted to see how a closed gas station in America can keep gas prices in a Canadian town cheaper because of weird rules about competition. That's just one example that proves what we do on our American side of the border has an impact on people in the outside world, too. Go see what I'm talking about for yourself, along with the haunted houses, cliff hikes, and slate countertops that are easy to find when you travel Maine by the mile.